Hey guys, Ben Pollock here with Granite Supplements. Today I want to talk to you all about three differences that I have found in tr programming, specifically programming for bodybuilding compared to programming for strength and specifically for powerlifting. We're not talking about the nitty gritty of training, okay? I've already explained that to you guys. Go back, watch some of my other videos. When you're in the gym, right? You already have your program set. You know what exercises you're going to do. You could be doing deadlifts. It doesn't matter if you're a bodybuilder or you're a powerlifter. You still might be doing deadlifts. If you're a bodybuilder, though, you're focusing on training the muscles, right? You're focusing on squeezing those glutes and hamstrings to initiate the movement off the floor. You're focused on keeping the lats tight and flexed throughout the movement and really trying to shift as much emphasis to those as possible. If you're a powerlifter, you're focused on the movement, okay? So you're not so concerned about the individual muscle groups. You're thinking more about, okay, how can I evenly distribute this weight between my posterior chain and my quads? How can I make sure that I keep my bar path as straight as possible? How can I make sure that I put myself in the ideal position to lock out and move as much weight as possible off the floor at the same time? Those are the considerations when you're a powerlifter. That's the nitty-gritty of training but you have to take a look at the bigger picture too and think about programming okay and that's what this video is about so three big differences between programming for bodybuilding and programming for powerlifting all right number one when you're programming for bodybuilding you have a lot more to consider than when you're programming for powerlifting for powerlifting you're constrained to three major lifts squat bench deadlift the majority of your training is going to be made up of the squat, bench, deadlift, or some variations thereof, right? It doesn't just have to be those uh, exercises. So you might do a close grip bench press. You might do a deficit deadlift, whatever. The point is your training is going to revolve around those exercises and making those exercises stronger. It's three different things you have to focus on, three different disciplines. If you're a powerlifter, you know it's damned hard to get all three going up at the same time. If two of three are going up and the other one's holding steady, you're, you're pretty happy with that. Well, now let's look at bodybuilding. Technically, you have over 600 different muscles that you would ideally need to target. Even if you're breaking them up into muscle groups, you still got chest, shoulders, triceps, biceps, hamstrings, quads. Like, there's so many different things that you need to consider, and they all have to be in balance. So, assuming you're starting with a balanced physique already, if you're going to say, well, I'm going to get three out of my six muscle groups moving up, that's pretty good. It's like, well, no, because now you're going to be asymmetrical and then you're going to have to worry about other things. If you're trying to correct asymmetries, well, then you're probably going to have to focus on one muscle group at the expense of others. So finding the right balance there is a little bit trickier. Furthermore, your movement selection is not as constrained, right? If I need to thicken my lower lats, right? This is an example I'm stealing from John Meadows. If I need to thicken my lower lats, well, deadlifts might not help, but regular rows might not help either. And you know, pull downs might not help. I might have to come up with some new type of exercise, like the Meadows row, right? The sideways barbell row, in order to address that weakness. And not because there's so much more variation, there's also a need for a lot more creativity in your movement selection as well. Okay? So that's one main difference. I'm not saying that that necessarily makes programming for bodybuilding harder, by the way. I'm just saying that it's different. All right? It's still pretty damn hard to program for powerlifting because, remember, in bodybuilding, your day-to-day -day metrics in the gym don't matter as much. You're, you just have different things that you're focusing on. Number two is going to get at that point, right, that your, your daily progress matters more. I don't want to say it that way. Number two is going to get at the point that the outcomes of a daily training session for powerlifting are more objective than they are for bodybuilding. For bodybuilding, right, well, again, let me take a step back. I want to make sure I say this right for y'all. If you've watched the Unfuck Your Program series, you know the basics of periodization. You know this is the underpinning of most progressive and popular and successful powerlifting programming methods, all right? As time goes on, you're going to decrease your training volume, right, the number of reps you're doing in a given period of time, and increase your intensity. Intensity here is the, defined as a percentage of your one rep max or your load. So that's a pretty simple method, right? decrease volume, increase intensity, get stronger. Well, for bodybuilding, right, studies have shown both academic studies and then, you know, not formal studies, but bro science in the gym, honestly, has shown that you need to be training hard, right? You need to be pushing yourself to a perceived exertion of failure or near failure in order to maximize your rate of muscle growth. 
And you need to keep your volume high pretty much all the time because volume is the main driver of hypertrophy. Well, first of all, we've got two differences already. One is the difference in the definition of intensity. For bodybuilding, you're, in you're defining intensity as your rate of perceived exertion. For powerlifting, you're defining it as a percentage of your one rep maximum. So you have a much different definition there, and that's based on your goals. There's also the issue, though, that in bodybuilding, ideally, you're keeping volume and intensity high all the time. So how are you supposed to progress in that method? Well, one answer is that you can add volume, right? You don't have to add weight to the bar. You can add volume. You can make an exercise more difficult by doing four straps, by going, uh, by doing negative only, by doing whatever. There's a lot more ways to progress in bodybuilding because the outcomes are not as objective. The judges do not care how much weight you lifted. They don't care whether you did four straps at the gym. They don't care whether you used bands or chains. All they care about is how you look, and so you have more freedom to define, okay, what is progress in a daily session? Again, this isn't harder or easier than it is for powerlifting. It's just different, and I would argue it requires a little bit more creativity. And then finally, you have all the considerations outside of the gym that still need to be part of your programming. Okay, this I think is the point I want to harp on the most because a lot of people think that programming ends when you save your Excel spreadsheet and you print it off and you go to the gym and you start training. That's not true. A good program adapts and a good program accounts for situations outside of the gym, whether or not they're in your control. And Unfuck Your Program, the course, talks about this a lot in detail. But let's take an example. Let's take diet, for example. Your typical powerlifter is not going to watch his diet. He's going to eat whatever the hell he wants all year round. <clears throat> and because of that, he's probably going to be in a pretty good caloric surplus all year round and able to train fairly intensely whenever the need may be. You still need to cycle volume and intensity, right, because of the issues of periodization that we discussed earlier. However, that's not so much dependent on diet. For a bodybuilder, the case is much different. When you're in the off season, you have a caloric surplus, you can go heavier, right? You can program heavier loads. You can go harder. You can program longer sessions, higher volume. But then when you're prepping for a show and your calories are very restricted and you're doing a lot of cardiovascular work on top of that, your energy and recovery resources are limited. So you, in order to prevent injury, in order to at least maintain muscle, you need to lighten the loads, which may seem a little bit counterintuitive at first. You may need to lighten the loads. You may need to lower the intensity. And we think of these as negatives. We think of, you know, during meat prep or show prep, you should be pushing harder. But again, this is how outside factors can influence good programming decisions. Uh, I already mentioned cardio is another example. If you're doing a lot of cardio, you're going to have to take away from some of the volume that you're doing in the gym, or you're probably going to end up overreaching unless you're eating a whole hell of a lot, which I am. Um, other considerations might include mobility, right? If you're a powerlifter and you can't hit depth in the squat, well, you got to do a lot of work and mobility to be able to hit depth in the squat. And that might take time away, time and energy away from your training. If you're a bodybuilder, you may have mobility limitations that prevent you from getting in the right pose, but I didn't, and my mobility is pretty darn bad, all things considered. So I think in, for the most part, powerlifting is going to, power, mobility is going to be a bigger programming concern for powerlifters. I could come up with a lot of different examples like these, but my main point that I really, really want to hammer home is that, okay, you have to account for factors outside of the gym when you're programming, and those factors are going to be different for bodybuilders and for powerlifters. So those are my three main differences. Again, to recap, for bodybuilding, you have more freedom but also a greater need for creativity and movement selection compared to powerlifting. In powerlifting, you have a more structured method and more objective outcomes that you're looking for in a daily training session compared to bodybuilding. And for both cases, you have to consider all the factors outside of the gym, which can be very different whenever you're making programming decisions. That's all I got for today. I hope you guys found this video interesting. I've written an article to go along with it that will be on Barben soon, and I will link to it in the description below. If you'd like to check out the Unfuck Your Program series or course that I mentioned during this video, that's also in the comments or the description of this video below. And please leave your questions, your comments, your feedback for me so that I can try and improve as I continue to do these videos. Until next time, think strong and train hard.